Hey everyone, Connor here from CameraStore.com, back with another how-to video. This time we have the illustrious Canon F1. This was Canon's professional model from the early 1970s all the way through the mid-1980s. Uh, this is the earliest model, the original F1. There's a few variants, we'll talk about them later. Um, but yeah, we're going to go over the features, levers, dials, buttons, all the different stuff that you see on the F1 as well as some basic operation, including how to load the camera, how to install a lens, install a battery, uh, how to rewind film when you're done with it, and how to load film. Before we get started, you're going to want to get your camera ready to go, and that includes putting a lens on it and putting the battery in. So we'll start with a battery. Turn the camera upside down. Right here is our battery compartment. I'm going to take a coin, put that in there, twist, twist, twist. And that should come out. There you go. So the Canon F1 does take a 1.3 volt mercury battery. That's no longer produced. But you can use a 1.5 volt modern battery. This is a PX625 battery. Uh, that only causes some minor issues with exposure. Um, it really won't affect your actual photos, especially if you're using modern color film. It's very forgiving. Um, there are some other options you can use, including an MR9 battery adapter. Uh, that'll allow you to use a standard LR44 battery and convert it to the right voltage. So if that's something you want to do, that option is there. We have them on our site, so you can get one there. Otherwise, we'll just put the battery in following this diagram here. So we put the negative or the negative side of the battery facing down, you can see on the diagram. So the negative side is this side, the thicker side of the battery. Put that facing down, put the top back in, we can screw it with our finger a little bit, and we take our coin and finish the job. And there you go. Your battery is now installed in your Canon F1. Now let's talk about how to put a lens on and take a lens off of the Canon F1. So I'm going to take the lens off to start. We'll start with installing a lens. So on every Canon FD body, there will be a red dot just below the Canon logo. This will line up with a red dot on the lens. You can see that there. So you go ahead and you put that, line up those two dots. And with an older FD lens like this, uh, denoted by this large silver ring at the bottom, when you press that together, then you want to rotate it like that. A lot of them will spring to the right like that. Uh, some of the older ones need a little bit of help doing that. But now the lens is locked in. And to uninstall the lens, it's basically the opposite. So you take this silver ring and it twists up until those red dots line up. And you can see that there. The lens comes right off. There you go. So that's how you install an old uh, SC lens onto a Canon F1. Now we'll go over the basic features, the dials, the switches, everything that you need to know about the Canon F1. So we'll start with the top of the camera. That's where most of our controls are. And we'll start from the left going over to the right, and I'll explain what everything is. So, starting here, this is our rewind knob. This is how we rewind the film when we're done with the roll. It's also how we open the back. So to open the back, there's a silver button here that you press. That allows you to pull this out. You can see it's pulled out from the body quite a bit. Pull it a little bit more, and the back springs open. Around this is a, a flash connection area. The F1 has an accessory flash shoe that would fit on top of the rewind knob. Uh, as you can see, there's no hot shoe anywhere, so that's how you would attach a flash. Um, here we have our film plane indicator. This is a little bit more advanced, but it tells us where the film is inside the body. Uh, if you needed to do very precise calculations for how far away your subject is from the camera. Just a little bit further in, we have a window. Um, this lets light come through the camera into the viewfinder. Uh, to illuminate the light meter. So try not to cover that if you can avoid it. Um, moving in just a bit, we have our prism. The Canon F1, like many professional cameras, has interchangeable prisms. Um, so you can sw swap this out for a waist level finder, for uh, a finder with a higher eyepiece, for sports finders. There's a bunch of different options. Uh, and taking them off is as simple as pressing these two buttons on the sides, and you can, here, there you go. You can kind of see there's two buttons on the same spot on the side. Press those in, and then the prism slides out backwards. And that reveals our focusing screen. These are also interchangeable. There's a bunch of different options for that. 
Uh, we'll go over what you see in the viewfinder just a little bit later in the video, but yeah, that's our focusing screen. So I'll slide that back on. And it does click into place if you didn't hear that when it's properly installed. So just make sure that it's on the rails and lined up well with the camera. Okay, a bit further in, we have our shutter speed dial. So this tells us the different shutter speeds available. The Canon F1 is a manual camera only. There's no automatic modes unless you do a whole bunch of work with accessories that we're not gonna cover here. So these are basically fractions of a second. So that's one one thousandth of a second, all the way down to one full second. One second. And then there's also bulb mode which is stays open as long as you hold this button down. No, that's maybe a little bit hard to picture. I will open the back and show you. Open, closed. So that's bulb mode. Um, good for long exposures, good for nighttime photography. Um, yeah, fast shutter speeds like 1 1 25th and above are able to capture motion uh, but they let much less light in, so in darker light, in darker scenes, you'll have to use slower shutter speeds, uh, and you may risk some motion blur and some camera shake as well, especially if you get below about 160th or 130th. Um, basically anything below that, it, it's recommended to put the camera on a tripod, um, or you risk some camera shake. So just a bit further in, we have our shutter button. As you have seen that's how I fire the shutter once I wind it. It does have these threads so you can attach an off-camera shutter release. A lot of, uh, it's a cable basically that goes out and then you'd hold it and you press it and it fires the shutter. Again, great for long exposures where you don't want to be touching the camera with your hands. Um, surrounding that is a shutter lock. So you can kind of twist this and yeah, you can see that white indicator moving from A to L. In an L mode, I can't press the shutter button. No matter how hard I try, but then I pop it to A mode, fires. So that's great if you don't want the camera to go off accidentally. A little bit further we have our advanced lever. The original F1 has a relatively short advanced lever that has to go quite a ways to properly advance the film. Um, later cameras rectified this with a slightly longer advanced lever so you don't have to pull it as much, but yeah. So there's our advanced lever, you pull it every single time and it should snap back into place when you release it. Last but not least, we have our frame counter, and as you can see, that counts up every time I advance the film. So now we're at 10, and that tells you how many shots you've taken. Uh, depending on the roll, if you have a roll of 36, you can technically get 37, 38 exposures if you're careful with how you load the camera. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you can basically shoot until the camera doesn't let you shoot anymore. Um, this just tells you how many shots you've taken if you want to take notes or keep track of what you're doing. And it resets when the back is opened. So you can see it reset just there. And that just about covers the top of the Canon F1. Oops, one more thing. Uh, we have our ISO window here. So the ISO basically is our sensitivity for the film. This is a, a static value that doesn't really change um, unless you change what film you have. So. You can see the window right there. Uh, so basically you take the film that you have, if I have this roll of coat of color, ISO 100, you can read it there. Uh, a lot of the time it's a really big number. Uh, Portra 400 is a 400 ISO film. So to change the ISO on this camera, you're going to want to lift the ring here, the shutter speed ring. You can see it moving there. You lift it and then you turn the ring and you can see those numbers changing without changing the shutter speed. So if I was uh, shooting that coat of color that's ISO 100, I would leave it at 100. Next we'll cover just a few things on the back of the camera. Uh, there's a few important features here. Number one is the on-off switch. So it has off, which is also what you'd use for the flash because uh, you don't really need the light meter for flash. Uh, you have on, which would activate only the light meter. As I said, the uh, Canon F1 doesn't actually need batteries for the shutter to work. The batteries only power the light meter. Um, so you can totally run this camera without batteries. The third position is a battery check. And you see it doesn't stick there. If I let it go, it shoots back to off. Um, when you're in the viewfinder, this will make the light meter jump up to a certain spot. 
uh, just have the ISO set to 100 and it'll jump to basically there's a small black box that you'll see when we look in the viewfinder and that's how you know that the battery has enough charge. Just here is the viewfinder. This is where you put your eye to see um, what you're going to take a picture of. Moving on to the bottom of the camera, there's not much here. Um, we have our battery compartment that we talked about earlier. This is where the battery is. You unscrew that with a coin, put the PX625 or other battery inside, and screw it back on. And then your camera is ready to meter. Just in a bit, we have our tripod socket. This is how you attach the camera to an accessory grip or a flash bracket or most likely to a tripod. This is a standard quarter inch tripod screw, so it should fit most normal tripods and accessories. A bit further, this is our rewind button. We press that in when we're done with the roll to release some tension in the body here, uh, basically allowing us to bring the film from here back into the canister here. So that needs to be held down while you're rewinding the film. And we'll get into that as we rewind the film. There's not so much on the front of the camera, but we will talk about this. This is a pretty complex mechanism that controls a few things. The self-timer, the aperture stop-down, and the mirror lock-up functions of this camera. So, yeah. Um, it's a self-timer if you pull it this way. I won't do it because it's a little bit loud. Um, but yeah, you pull it that way, and then when you press this button, it'll basically... The lever will return to its original position and it'll make a loud bzzz kind of sound. Um, it'll take a few seconds and that'll give you, the photographer, a chance to go into the group shot or to set yourself up for a self-portrait or whatever else you want to do. If we push it the other way though, that activates our mirror lockup and our aperture stop down modes. And you can see the aperture stopped down when I did that, and this locked in place. So this is our release button for that. Uh, you push this lever on the bottom from the L position to there, and that'll release the aperture. The aperture is basically this opening that decides how much light is let through at any given time. Uh, that controls depth of field, mainly. So I'll reset that. Mirror lockup is another thing that's a bit advanced. Get the lens off. Oh, sorry, it's... <laughs> I activated it again. There we go. I'll get the lens off here, and I'll show you mirror lockup. So we press that there, and then you can see the mirror move up and out of the way. You might be thinking, why would I want to do this? The short answer is long exposure photography. You basically don't want the camera to shake if you're doing astrophotography or taking pictures of stuff that you really need the camera to be still for a long time. Um, even just the motion of this, the, the mirror moving up and down when you fire the shutter, can cause camera shake. So, if you're doing astrophotography or something like that, what you'd want to do is look through the viewfinder, frame, compose, focus, light meter, everything you need, and then right before you fire the shutter, you click this out of the way. And you can see it's actually much quieter without the mirror moving. So I'm firing the shutter and it's even kind of hard to see because the mirror is not moving. So I'll go ahead and release all that. Next up we have our lens functions and there's just a few things here on the lens. We have the aperture ring here which controls, as I just mentioned before, the aperture, so the opening. Uh, a smaller number like f1.4 is a wider aperture that lets more light in and has a shallower depth of field. So this will be good in low light or if you want a um, sharp subject with a blurry background, which is a, a pretty common look for portraiture. If I twist this just a bit further to something like f8 to f16, that'll get a lot of things in focus. Um, that's great for, for landscapes and maybe environmental portraiture where you want everything to be in focus, um, but it does require a lot more light so because that opening is much smaller. So yeah. There is also an A mode on all FD lenses. The Canon F1 can't take advantage of this. There's no automatic functions on this camera. So uh, if you have a lens with an A mode like this, this is a green circle, but most of them will have a green A. Just make sure that it's on one of the numbers instead. Moving a bit further, we have our depth of field scale and focus ring. So focus basically controls how far away the subject is or should be to be sharp in the photo. 
Uh, this 50 millimeter lens focuses on anything from 0.45 meters out to infinity, so as far away as possible. And that's great for pretty much all general photography. Um, other things, you know, will require a specific lens to be able to focus. Just down from the focus ring is our uh, depth of field scale. So a hyperfocal scale as well is another name. So that basically can give us a range of focuses depending on the aperture that we have selected. So you can see different numbers here that correlate to the numbers on the aperture ring. The widest ones, uh, 16, are great for an example. So if I set the aperture to 16 and then I put 10 meters here at this rightmost uh, indicator, that puts 2 meters at this leftmost indicator. So that means we'll get everything from 2 meters to 10 meters in focus if we put the focus right here while using f16. So that just about covers everything on the lens here. There are some accessory bayonets on the end of the lens that you'd use for a lens hood. Um, each Canon FD lens does require a specific hood because of this, um, but there are also filter threads that you can attach a generic hood to, or filters. Next up, we'll cover some basic operation. So we'll start with how to load and unload a roll of film. So what you're going to want to do is turn the camera upside down onto its lens, I guess. Open the back before, uh, like we did before, by holding this button down, pulling the rewind knob up. You pull it just a bit further. And the back will open. Then we take our film, my code of color test roll here, put it in here. That will close inside of it, and that holds the film in place. We can pull the film across, but before we do that, we'll take a look here. This is our take-up spool. This is where we're going to attach the film. You can see it has an arrow on it that tells us what direction it goes. But it also has these slits with teeth at the bottom. The teeth are what we want to line the film up with. There are holes in the film on the top. Oh. <laughs> on the top and the bottom, we want to line the holes up with those teeth so that we, when we pull the film, it pulls like that. And normally you'd close the back at this point, but I will show you just a few more just so you can see the film traveling across the camera as I pull it. So yeah, we'll close the back now. And now we'll shoot our roll. Congrats, you've successfully loaded a roll into your Canon F1 and you're ready to take photos of whatever you'd like. So we're shooting, we're shooting, we're shooting. And obviously we're taking more care than I am to get good shots and keep everything in focus and properly exposed. Oh, and there we go, we finished the roll. So this doesn't let me pull any further and I don't want to force it because that could rip the film. So, rewinding now. We're going to want to take the camera just how we had it before. Press this button on the bottom, hold that down. This will open up and there's an arrow on that, the rewind knob here, that you can see. So we turn it according to the arrow. And we're basically waiting for a small sound and for the resistance to go away. So it'll get much easier um, once the film is disconnected from this side and going back into the canister here. And you'll be able to feel it, and hopefully be able to hear it as well. So there it is, there was a click there. And now this is much easier to turn. Normally, yeah, well, there it is as well. Um, normally, I would keep rewinding to fully get the roll, or get the film back inside the canister, but because this is my test roll, I don't want to lose it. <laughs> so you can see it's still actually attached to this spool here, but there you go. Our roll is now ready for processing. So you can send this to a lab or do it yourself if you're so inclined. Right, so what we're going to want to look through next is the viewfinder of the F1. So we can talk about the light meter and the focusing aid and all that stuff. So we're going to look through here. So now we're looking inside the viewfinder of the Canon F1. Uh, it's a pretty basic thing. There's only really two things I want to cover, the focusing aid and the light meter. We'll start with the light meter, actually. So that's that bar on the right side. Um, you can see it has a circle. Um, as well as red sections at the top and bottom. These are basically indicators that it's overexposed or underexposed. 
um, if there's not enough light or too much light, depending on your current settings. If I go ahead and I put the camera to the battery check mode, you'll see a needle jump up just to that black box, and that's what I mentioned earlier. That's your battery check. If the needle doesn't go to that black box, then you either don't have enough voltage or you don't have the battery installed correctly. So yeah, I will pop the camera now into on, and now I can start changing some settings. So now you see if I change the aperture ring, that circle moves. And if I change the shutter speed, the needle moves. So our goal with this is basically to get the needle to be directly in the center of the circle. This is what we call a match needle metering system. So I'll go ahead and I will set the shutter speed here at 1 30th of a second. And I'll move my shutter speed or my aperture here to match it. So there you go. There is our f around 3.2 um, to get proper exposure with 1 30th of a second. So you can actually see the shutter speed that you have selected directly below the light meter. Unfortunately, you can't see the aperture you have selected, um, so you will have to take your eye away from the viewfinder for that. But yeah, it's a, a relatively simple system. It can seem complex if you don't know what you're looking for, but yeah, once you figure it out the match needle system, you can use that on plenty of different cameras, but especially the Canon F1. Moving on to our focusing aid. This Canon F1 has the Type E focusing screen, which doesn't have a split prism or a micro prism for focusing. Uh, this is more for maybe some close-up photography or some group shots and stuff like that where you want things to be aligned properly, so it has that grid. It is still possible to get precise focus, so as I turn the focusing ring, you can basically see the subject getting less or more sharp. So our goal basically is to get it so that it looks sharp. Um, with different focusing screens, you may get focusing aids, such as a split prism, which would be sort of a circle with a line through it. And as I turn the focusing ring, the top and bottom sections of that would move left and right. If you have that, your goal is basically to get the top and the bottom to line up. Before we wrap things up, let's um, talk a little bit about the Canon F1 and some advantages and disadvantages of it. So one of the main advantages that I've mentioned a few times is that uh, there are no batteries required for the operation of this. The battery only powers the light meter. So if you are familiar with the rules of exposure or have an external light meter, you don't need a battery for this. And that's a, a great plus because this does use um, an outdated mercury battery. Um, it is possible to get them adjusted to take modern batteries without an adapter or a voltage difference, um, but that can cost quite a bit of money. So, yeah, um, we normally... Uh, either don't adjust them and sell them with the MR9 battery adapter, or we do adjust them. So if you're buying one from us, you should be able to tell from our site which it is. Um, one either advantage or disadvantage that we talked about is that the F1 is manual exposure only. Um, if you're a beginner, this is maybe not the best way to learn. Uh, it does require you understanding the principles of shutter speed and aperture to really get the most out of it. Um, and there's not much hand-holding to be had with a professional camera like this. The F1 was designed for professional use to compete with the Nikon F, the Nikon F2, stuff like that. Um, it really wasn't designed for somebody who doesn't know that much about photography. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking for one. Um, it may be better to start with something a little bit more automatic, like a Canon AE-1 or a Canon AV-1 or something like that. But yeah. The F1 is a really reliable, robustly built camera. It's very heavy, um, solid metal, definitely built to, to last um, if taken care of. Um, something like this that has been serviced by our mechanics even after 50, 60 years of existing uh, can still work wonderfully and take beautiful photos. So yeah, if you have an F1, good for you. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. That has been the how-to on the Canon F1, covering the buttons, dials, and basic operations of the camera. I've been Connor from Camera Store. Leave a comment below if you have a camera that you'd like us to cover. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.